Hi guys, welcome back to Beauty for Ashes. So happy to have you guys here. Happy New Year. It is a new year filled with endless possibilities. And I really pray that as you guys navigate through this year, you find yourself in alignment with whatever God has in store for you. I hope this new year brings you joy. This year brings you peace. This new year brings you all that your hearts desire. And do not forget that as those promises come to pass, please come back and share those, share those victories, share those wins on this platform. Because again, I would love to hear your testimony. So happy new year, guys. It's officially 2022. And I'm so excited to see what God has in store for us for this year. Um, I'm excited to see what God has in store for you, for my family. But I know for a fact that this year, God's hands will be evident in each and every one of your lives. So please come into agreement that in the name of Jesus, God's hands will be present. It will be evident and you will be able to see the manifestation of God's promises in your life. Amen. So my name is Kashina for those of you who are new to the channel and I am just everything regarding women's empowerment. I really love to see women, you know, take off the sackcloth and ashes and really move into God's marvelous light. Um, that is my testimony, essentially. I'm um, coming out of darkness, coming out of failure, coming out of things that really wasn't edifying to God. But I'm really so happy that God saw it fit to restore my life. Um, for even me to be on this platform to share my testimony with you ladies. So I create tools and resources to help women break out into their best selves. So stay tuned on this channel where you will see new programs, new conferences, you'll see courses, you'll see all those marvelous things, again, to help you, to push you in your place of promise. So welcome to the channel, Happy New Year. And as you can see, from the title of this video, we are expecting another baby. <laughs> Yay! If you've been following my channel, my husband and I are expecting our second child together. But in fact, we have three children because I had my daughter before we got married. Um, and if you've been following my testimony for a while, you know that we had a miscarriage back in September in 2021. We had a miscarriage and it was an early miscarriage known as a chemical pregnancy, but nevertheless, it was still devastating. Whether you know you lose your baby later on, a loss is a loss and it was really hard to process. But I remember God really pushing me to share that story. And I'm talking about days after I had that miscarriage, the Lord was really impressing it on my heart to share, you know, that loss with you guys. And I remember taking a step of faith because you know it's not easy to come on YouTube and to be vulnerable and to really share intimate details of your life, especially when you're still going through the process. It is different when you're, you know, sharing it in hindsight, but when you're still going through the process, you're still going through the grieving, and then the Lord is now saying, hey, I want you to share your testimony with others, is not the easiest thing to do. I remember saying to the Lord that God, I will share that story as soon as I get pregnant again, because again, I want it to be a testimony, not just me suffering or going through um, this heavy loss. And I remember the Lord saying, no, no, no. I, I want you to share those moments when you're in the pits. So many of us, we share when we're on the mountain, when we're in or high places, we don't share those bumpy moments, those uncomfortable moments, you know, those moments that are really hard to get through, especially when there's no testimony backing it up. So the Lord impressed it on my heart to share about that story. Little did I know that the following month would have been the month when my husband and I would conceive. So in this video, I would just like to give you a little bit of backstory and how this came about because you know, Everything that I do, God is in the midst of it. And my goal is just to share the heart of God towards you. So again, your faith could be ignited to follow the Lord's ways. So I remember in 2019, in 2019, the Lord said to me that 
when I got married, and this is in my journal somewhere, when I got married, I will be entering into an immediate childbearing season. So I wrote it down and of course, you know, I was just sharing with my friends and family, people who were really near and dear to my heart. But the Lord did give me a hint that I will be entering into a childbearing season as soon as I got married. And it's so crazy, guys. We're not even, my husband and I, we're not even on our two year anniversary. And I'm telling you, two years ago, it was just me and my daughter less than two years ago. And fast forward almost two years later, our family is like a family of five. So I'm telling you when God is accelerating, when he is really putting the pedal to the metal, you have to really put your seatbelt on because I'm telling you, there's no stopping, right? So those of you who are praying for acceleration, please prepare yourself because I'm telling you, it's not easy all the time when God is accelerating your life. It is good, but guess what? You don't really have the time to to sit and to smell the roses. Because again, two years ago, it was just me and my daughter. And now in 2022, before my second year anniversary, we're a family of five, but glory be to God, you know, the more the merrier. So the Lord told me in 2019 that I would enter into a childbearing season. And to be honest, um, I knew that going into my marriage, because again, I knew that we would have conceived on our wedding night. I had everything all the details that i needed regarding my son's conception and birth the lord gave me his name i knew that what was really crazy though my youtube family was when i was pregnant with my son i was in my seventh month of pregnancy i remember just laying down and the lord saying to me that there is a child that is immediately behind my son and it's so crazy because I never really thought how close my children would be in age. My daughter is nine, my son is one. But when I was pregnant, the Lord said that there was a child that was right behind Nathan. Um, when I went back to maternity leave, you know, I had my son and my first day back on the job <laughs> was when the Lord began to speak to my spirit about this new child, this other child that he is getting ready to bless or family with and you know what happened i was terrified let me tell you i was terrified because at this point my son was only four months old and here comes the lord now saying hey remember what i told you when you were seven months pregnant that there was a child following right behind nathan well now i'm letting you know that we're getting ready for this child so guys this was my first day back to work and i am freaking out because i'm like lord it is already hard by itself my husband was still overseas at the time and it was just me and i'm like god now you're telling me that there's you know that I, I need to get my mind ready you know for this new child my body is still healing and guys i'm gonna be honest and i'm gonna be vulnerable like i struggled with that like i struggled with the fact that the Lord really wanted us to have our children so close in age. You know, I really struggled with it. And I remember on that same morning when I returned to work mm -hmm. and the Lord said to me, what is your reservation for having more children? And I'm like, Lord, who is going to take care of these children? Like having them is one thing. I know that they're a blessing, but you know in my culture where i'm from the more children that you have the more that you are in position for poverty to be your portion okay so i was raised in a culture where i've just never seen someone with with a lot of children just live a, a comfortable life especially financially it's always you know they're always struggling or they have to send two children you know to live with the aunt and the, you know the children are scattered like I've, i just never seen that family where they have four or five six children and everyone is happy and comfortable and they can all live in the same space and you know grow them and they, they they go to college and you know all that good stuff like i just never seen it in my culture so i really struggled with that and i began to reject in my heart god's word of wanting to bless my family with more children because my mindset was stuck on the more children you have the more you're in line for poverty to take you over, right? So I'm like, God, 
who is going to take care of these children? Like who is going to, you know, God forbid something happens, you know, to my husband and I, like who is going to take care of these children? Nevertheless, the Lord did not say a word, but he asked me like, what was my reservation? And I told him my reservations. So fast forward a few days later, here comes my daughter and she's so prophetic. Um, she has prophetic dreams and often the Lord uses her to communicate to me as well through dreams. And she came to me and she said, mom, you know, I had a dream and in the dream you were pregnant um, with another baby. So at this point I'm like, okay you know this is god confirming to me that hey this is coming and i need you to prepare your heart for the blessings that i would like to give you so she came to me and she said mom i had a dream and in this dream you know you were pregnant so i said to her i'm like okay thanks for telling me but how old was nathan in the dream and she said he was a baby. <laughs> she said he was a baby because you had him on your stomach and you know, you guys were sitting on the sofa and he was sitting on your stomach and he was a baby. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So again, just a few days before the Lord asked me like, what were your reservations for having more children? And I expressed my thoughts and here comes my daughter a few days later so i'm like okay you know thank you for sharing the dream so i'm like okay god i hear you so i move on from so now literally a day after that you know i'm pondering these things that the lord is saying just like mary um when she found out that she was with child i was just pondering these things and i'm like okay god i hear what you're saying it doesn't mean that i'm not nervous about you know bringing children into the world and really struggling with them financially struggling not being able to be there struggling not being able to you know stay at home with my children and just give them the best of myself because i have to work like i am a career mother you know so i'm like okay god i hear you i hear what you're saying but um, I may need some time to process this. Mind you, my husband was scheduled to migrate finally to the United States a few weeks later. So after my daughter told me that dream, a day or so later, my husband sent me a devotional from his job. So, you know, every now and then they send devotionals and for some reason he sent the devotional to me, right? And I'm just gonna share with you just a tad bit of the devotional um, maybe I should just read it from the beginning. So it says from the beginning of time, God has made promises to his children and he has always kept his promises. Some of his promises are not fulfilled immediately, but he will make it come to pass in his perfect timing. God is trustworthy and he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow he does not change and he will never lie to us mislead us or be unfaithful you can trust god to do what he says he will do we might not always understand the reasons why but it's not for us to question god it is our job to trust so when god says he will provide for your every need we can trust that he will take care of us guys this is what got me it says, the Bible says in Genesis 50, verse 21, now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. Guys, when I read that, I just flatlined. I'm like, okay, the Lord has answered my concern and I just refuse to be stubborn. Like I'm really going to submit my life which includes my body to the Lord and just have him have his way. So in that moment, right in March, 2021, I agreed to the Lord's plans for us to have, how, however many children he desires for us to have. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't have my concerns, but my concerns are not as important as the will of God because sometimes the Lord will send you in a direction and it doesn't mean that you don't have concerns. Yes, you're gonna have concerns, but as long as your will is subjected to his will and as long as he will have the, the say in your life and his will will come to pass in your life because you're obedient and you're submissive, over time he will address those concerns or those concerns will address themselves. So at that moment in March, 2021, I made 
uh, an agreement with the Lord to say, hey, God, you know, whatever your will is for me, for my body concerning children, not my will, but thine will be done. So guys, this is why we're here today. Um, and I'm so happy to share the news. But before, what's even crazier is I remember saying to the Lord, and I'm just going to share this tad bit before I close out the video. I remember sitting down at work and I am calculating because I just got back from maternity leave and this was March 2021 and I'm like, okay, God, it's going to look a little funny if I have to take another set of maternity leave. So guess what? If I get pregnant in September, then I will have my baby in June, right? And that is when the school year closes. So technically I wouldn't have to take maternity leave and it wouldn't look so bad on my records that I'm always gone. So I made that pact with the Lord, like, you know what, God, if I get pregnant in September, that will be amazing. Um, and then the baby will be born in June. I'll have the summer and then I can be back to work in September. So I'm like, God, I will agree to your plans if you do it that way for me. And guys, as I said, if you followed my testimony in September, I found out that I was pregnant and I had a miscarriage a few days later. It was a chemical pregnancy. So that is how that moment was so hard for me to digest because I'm like, Lord, we agreed on this, right? Didn't we agree on this months before that September was the month? but September was not the month. And it really shows us that sometimes, you know, we throw in our plans um, in God's word. Sometimes the Lord has promises and he has things that he wants to bless us with, but we give him conditions. Lord, I will, I will accept this. I will take this. This is okay as long as. So my encouragement to you ladies is, listen, whatever the Lord says goes try let's try our best not to you know put in the fine print in the contract or the agreement that God has for us because guess what he really doesn't have to honor that if he doesn't want to right so don't be so focused on the fine print the what ifs and you know the additional things the request that you would like to put in to tag it on to the blessings that God has in store for you because really I had a miscarriage in September, so that was not God's will. But come October, the Lord knew that he would have blessed us with another baby. So again, guys, I'm so happy to share this news with you. I'm hoping that I can share a little bit more about my journey. The first three months was chaotic, okay? Like I was sick, I was sick to my stomach. It was rough, like couple nights, I remember coming home from work, rushing home from work, bawling my eyes out because I was so sick and I remember one day I was in the in the bathroom just crying just like sobbing you know like I, I felt like I wanted to throw up and I was just crying and I heard the voice of God said did you talk to me about your morning sickness and I'm like Lord I've been telling you about this you know since week four but really I was telling others about um, me feeling sick, hoping that the Lord would have eavesdropped on the conversation and picked up that I was feeling sick. But I never really sat before God and say, you know what, well, Lord, like, I need you to take this nausea, <laughs> this nausea away, this, this sick feel like I need you to get get rid of it. Um, but again, I spent the time complaining to others about how sick I felt and the Lord really had to call me out on it you know he really had to call me out and say you never came to me about your sickness and i remember the only thing that i said in the bathroom as i was crying was lord help me like i just did not have the words it was so rough i was so sick and the only thing that i could have said was lord help me um and what's crazy is even after that day the sickness just subsided and I never really felt that sick as how I was before. So again, that's a lesson in and of itself. Like sometimes we really have to take our problems to God. No matter how small they are, I know that he will always be there and he will always help us. He is 
or ever present help in our time of need. So guys, thank you so much for watching Beauty for Ashes. I'm really hoping that I can share more of this pregnancy with you. As soon as we find out if it's a boy or a girl, we'll let you guys know and you guys can help us pick out a name because the Lord did not give us a name. And I really do feel like we have free reign over this baby to come up with our own creative name. So we're gonna depend on our YouTube family to help us to name this precious baby. I went for my 12 week scan and the doctor made a guess of the sex, but I'm just not sure. So we'll wait for that 20 week scan. And of course, I will update you guys as soon as I find out. So thank you guys so much for watching Beauty for Ashes and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.